St. Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the communion with the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome to the celebration of this Eucharist and the Feast of the Assumption of Our Lady into Heaven. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from two donors. The first is an anonymous donor from St. Stephen's Parish in Lacombe, Alberta, in gratitude for their children and their families and loving memory of Albert Ben Dreesen, grandson Justin Graeber, and for the living and deceased members of the Dreesen and Nobel families. Since arranging this Mass, our donor has passed away. May her soul and the souls of the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. The second donor is Julia Doyle from Westminster, British Columbia, for the living and deceased members of her family and for the complete recovery of her granddaughter from cancer. Our thanks go out to both these donors. And now as we celebrate this beautiful feast of Our Lady, let us ask the Lord, let us ask Our Lady, to make us worthy to celebrate this Eucharist. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ of mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us praise God together now as we say, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, priest to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, you tell... You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> o God, who, looking on the lowliness of the Blessed Virgin Mary, raised her to this grace, that your only begotten Son was born of her according to the flesh, and that she was crowned this day with surpassing glory. Grant, through her prayers, that saved by the mystery of your redemption, we may merit to be exalted to you on high. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the first book of Chronicles. David assembled all Israel in Jerusalem to bring up the ark of the Lord to its place, which he had prepared for it. Then David gathered together the descendants of Aaron and the Levites. The Levites carried the ark of God on their shoulders with the poles, as Moses had commanded according to the word of the Lord. David also commanded the chiefs of the Levites to appoint their kindred as the singers, to play on musical instruments, on harps and lyres and cymbals, to praise loud sounds of joy. They brought in the Ark of God and set it inside the tent that David had pitched for it. And they offered burnt offerings and offerings of well-being before God. When David had finished offering the burnt offerings and the communion offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord. The Queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. The Queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. Daughters of kings are among your ladies of honor. At your right hand stands 
is the queen and god of all fear. Hear, O daughter, consider and incline your ear. Forget your people and your father's house. The The king will desire your beauty, since he is your lord, bow to him. The princess is decked with golden robes, in many colored robes she is led to the king. Behind her the virgins, her companions follow. The The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. As Jesus was speaking to the people, a woman in the crowd raised her voice and said to him, Blessed is the womb that bore you and the breast that nursed you. But Jesus said, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey it. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear friends, the Olympics are over, and all those advertisements that kept on bombarding us are also over. But there was one ad that caught my attention during the Olympics, and that was you saw a gray haired generation getting ready to dive getting ready to do gymnastics, getting ready to do athletics. And the end of the ad, it said, mums and dads also deserve the victory. Mums and dads also share the glory. And that's what we celebrate today, a mum who shares the glory, the glory of our Lord, the glory of Jesus Christ, who died and is now seated at the right hand of the Father. When Mary finished her earthly course, or finished her life on this earth, she was assumed into heaven, body and soul, and that is what we celebrate today. In 431, in the Council of Ephesus that was held in present-day Turkey, she was declared Theotokos, which means Mother of God. And within a century, the churches in the East 
Alexandria, Antioch, Constantinople, the Eastern churches celebrated the Assumption of Mary into heaven. A few centuries later, the Western Church in Rome also adopted this feast. When you go to any religion, Hindu, Muslim, Jewish, Buddhist, Christian, they always have what is called a sacred space, a place where you can encounter God. It's a place of quiet, a place of silence, a place of meditation, a place of great reverence. And in many of these temples and mosques, like the Hindus, the Muslims, the Buddhists, they will remove their shoes before they enter the sacred space as a sign of humility, as a sign of openness to God's working within you. And this sacred space is something that is very special to each one of them. We have it also in our church today, a sacred space where we can be quiet and encounter God. In our first reading today, we have from the book of Chronicles also a sacred space. David is going to bring the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem, and the sacred space is a tent. He has a ritual, first a space, then a sacrifice, and finally a ritual of dancing and singing. Thousands of years later, we too have a sacred space. We too call this church a place where we can meet God and encounter God. Unfortunately, in the last 20 years or so, it's become more or less like a fast food place like McDonald's and Hamburg and uh, Harvey's, where we come in, we talk, we chat, we shake hands, we look around, and we wait until the priest comes under the altar to make it a sacred space when it shouldn't be so. But we also do other things that David did so many years ago. One of the things he did was to offer sacrifices. We offer the sacrifice, the mass at the altar. And finally, there was dancing and singing. We have singing over here, but I doubt whether I'd call Christopher Koo to come down and leave the pipe organ there and come down with a tambourine. He would be stopped. If this is not a Canadian tradition. It is done in the Caribbean when I was in Guyana and in Africa, and we've got a lot to learn from them. We could really make this something very similar to when the Ark of the Covenant was brought by David into Jerusalem. Mary is sacred space, and the Ark of the Covenant, which is a symbol of God, is very well applied to her. In the litanies, we have so many different titles, Gate of Heaven, Mirror of Justice, Tower of Ivory, Tower of David. The Ark of the Covenant is most relevant today. Mary surrounded, Mary nourished, Mary allowed the Word of God to become flesh and to dwell amongst us. God could have chosen any way to dwell amongst us, but he chose a woman. And the woman could very well have said no, but she said yes in obedience to the Word of God, just like a son who was to be born later would be obedient to the Father. And therefore, this sacred space could not be contaminated and was taken body and soul into heaven when Mary finished her course on this earth. And so we venerate her today. The only problem is that sometimes we try to go a step too much. We try to make Mary into God. And this is not only lay people, but some priests and bishops as well. And if Mary had heard this, she would be absolutely horrified. She declared herself to be the handmaid of the Lord. She didn't take on any of the glory that could have been hers because she says, the Almighty has done great things for me because he has kept the promises that he made to Abraham and our forefathers before him. And in our gospel today, we have the same thing. Somebody tries to make Mary more than what she was. Blessed is the womb that bore you and the one who nourished you. And Jesus puts the thing in context very quickly. He says, yes, it is truly blessed to be related physically, but it is more blessed to hear the word of God and to keep it. And this was not the only occasion he does it. He also did it in Mark, in Mark chapter 3, verse 35, when people came and said, your mother and your sister and your brothers are waiting out. And he turned around and said, 
who is my mother, who are my brothers and sisters, the one who keeps the word of God, who hears the word of God and keeps it. And so Mary was blessed because she was physically the mother of God, but she was doubly blessed because she heard the word of God and kept it. Mary conceived without sin. Mary assumed into heaven. Pray for us. I'd ask you to join me now as we make the creed. We say the creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And now we will offer the bread and wine. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. My sisters, my brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Let us pray. May this oblation, our tribute of homage, rise up to you, O Lord, and through the intercession of the most blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, may our hearts aflame with the fire of love constantly long for you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through our Lord Jesus Christ. For today, the Virgin Mary, Mother of God, was assumed into heaven as the beginning and the image of your church's coming to perfection and a sign of sure hope and comfort to your pilgrim people. Rightly, you would not allow her to see the corruption of the tomb since her own body she marvelously brought forth your incarnate Son, the author of all life. And so now, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as with joy we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. 
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Benedict our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, the bishops across Canada and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary assumed into heaven, the Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Formed by divine teaching and at the Savior's command, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Jesus be with you always. Amen. Let us share with one another a sign of this peace and friendship.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us in all Would our those of you at home join with me now in this prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. May this oblation, our tribute of homage, rise up to you, O Lord, and through the intercession of the most blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, may our hearts aflame with the fire of love, constantly long for you through Christ our Lord. Amen. And I ask you to pray in a special way for the repose of the soul of Father Jim Webb, my companion, and our former Jesuit provincial. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has been celebrated. Go in peace. Yes, thank you, Our thanks to two donors. The first, an anonymous donor from St. Stephen's Parish in Lacombe, Alberta. The second is Julia Doyle from New Westminster, British Columbia. And it's their generous contributions that made the televising of today's Mass possible. <laughs>